So, uh, without further ado, Matthias. Hello. Hey, it's <laughs> nice to be here. I appreciate you coming, man. How are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Nice, man. Um, so, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so, I'm Matthias. I'm a director of photography and a gaffer. And I work freelance in the UK film industry. Um, I mainly do independent stuff and narrative stuff. So I've done a mixture of short films, um, web series, and a few feature films now. Nice, man. That's great. How did you get into this kind of work? Is it something you've always wanted to do? Um, so I guess this wasn't specifically what I always wanted to do. I've always like had a like been drawn to creative stuff and like dabbled with different stuff like music, video games, all sorts of different ways of being creative and express myself I and mean, then I guess it was while I was at uni is when I kind of nailed down that the film industry was how I could actually see myself doing this as a career and then particularly cinematography and like the lighting and camera and visual art of film is what I was drawn to and had so while that's I was at university I joined the film production society and then became vice president of it was doing lots of stuff with them and then once I graduated decided I'd just continue doing as I was sort of going Nice, man. What uni did you go to? So I went to Lancaster, so right up north. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Would you recommend the course? Um, so I didn't do a film-related course. I studied English language and creative writing, but oh. um, I enjoyed my time up there. And then it was more through the society that I was doing my film sort of stuff. And kind of that's, as the years went on at the university, I started to do spend more time doing society stuff than my course. So I could see that's where I needed to be. <laughs> cool man um so because you do a bit of everything behind the camera is there a particular uh one that you prefer more than the other is there one that you've perhaps done longer than the other like how do they all kind of combine like gaffering and being a dop etc um i mean there's a lot of overlap with dop and gaffer because of as the dop you're in charge of both the camera and lighting departments but as the gaffer you're just specifically looking at that lighting department um, what you typically see is like DOPs will either come up through the lighting route, the camera route, or the grip route. And I've definitely been up the lighting route. And that's kind of the aspect of cinematography that I enjoy the most. But I do also like the camera side to it and the camera movement side to it. So I love doing my DOP work as well as the gaffer stuff. I think it's kind of nice to have a bit of balance of both. Because a DOP is a lot more like pressure than a gaffer. It's a lot more prep work, it's a lot more time, um, it's a lot more stressful. And so every once in a while having the opportunity to do some gaffer work where I know it's not going to be as big of a time commitment and then I can kind of like rest up a bit before I go into another DAP job. It's quite nice to balance up your workload like that. And I, I like a lot of DAPs nowadays are finding that they're not just DAP all the time, sometimes they are doing a bit of other stuff. Nice one. Is there a project you've done that you can say oh yeah i really enjoyed that working on that film or you know is it could you can't any memories or experiences you kind of i mean a lot of the projects that i've worked on i can say that about what i find is often it's the people i'm working with that make a project really enjoyable and so often when i'm looking for jobs i'm quite like conscious of thinking about who the people are who are hiring me and the vibe i get from them and if i get good vibes from people i'm going to be a lot more joined to a project because of I think your enjoyment in these, especially as sunsets, but like at times they'll get stressful, you're under time pressure, things aren't going to yeah. go right. Having good people around you, as Polly mentioned, like it's so, so positive and so useful. And yeah, I've had a lot of sets that I've really enjoyed the people I've been with. And um, it's especially on those sets where you're on your shoot for multiple days with the same people and you really get to know people, you get to like get used to work with those people and spend time with them. Those are always the funnest. Yeah. Is there any kind of experiences that haven't gone so well that you've kind of learned from or perhaps anything you kind of would remember? Oh, I wouldn't do that again or anything like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. So you have those sets that things like nothing seems to go to plan and um, they tend to be very stressful. What I found is often on every set you do, something's not going to go right, but it's the sets where you maybe haven't had as much time for pre-production, you haven't planned well enough beforehand. When stuff goes wrong in those circumstances, it's like a thousand times tougher. And those 
in my memory, it's those shoots that have been almost the worst experiences on set, just because of at least when you've planned stuff and you've thought about stuff for a long time, when stuff goes wrong, your mind's already like thought of backup plans, kind of as Harley was saying, that plan A, that plan B, that plan C. But when you've not spent as much time thinking about that project and planning, when stuff go, don't go wrong, you're really on the spot and it's, yeah, it can be a lot of pressure in that moment. Yeah, 100%, man. So correct me if I'm wrong here, um, I remember we spoke previously about uh, your production company that I think you co-own. And correct me if I'm wrong, but what's this production company? How did that kind of become a thing? Yeah, so while I was at university and I was vice president, um, so me and the president were running the society together. It was a society of like over 100 members. Every year we were making seven short films and then also doing videography work and like ad work for local businesses, sometimes for university themselves, sometimes departments within the university. And so when we graduated from uni, two of us, couple, we've had this time and experience almost running a production company within that society. Um, we kind of got the skills to just do this as a job. So that's kind of what we initially started to do after uni. Um, then COVID came along and like it became very hard to get constant work and um, kind of keep a map going. And both of us just happened to find that our freelance careers doing narrative film stuff were kind of picking off more than the stuff of the company. So yeah. since COVID, that's kind of been both of our like, focus more working on our own personal freelance careers, but we still have that production company there if we want to return to it at any point. We've got that means to like produce our own content. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, thought I'd put them out there. So Alicia's asked, uh, do you have any advice for creators just starting out in the camera department? Um, yeah, I think try and seize any opportunity you can like get onto set meet people because of it's people are gonna want to bring you back onto more productions and like being just a nice kind person is gonna get you onto a lot more productions and the more production you get onto the more you learn the more experience you get the better you get at doing whatever job within that camera department you want to do so just when there's an opportunity you think the people look good you think you'll learn a lot from it like kind of go for it whenever you can because of you're just going to learn so much more and move so much faster the more sets you can get onto. And then also, I'd say if you've got a plan of eventually ending up in a higher role in that camera department, like try on the side doing that other role as well so you can gain experience doing that, even if you're not at the stage where you can be doing that all the time yet. Any opportunity you can get to like practice being in that step up will help you a lot when you eventually get there. Nice. I have a question, actually, just following on from that, if that's okay with us. I'm just curious because, say, you know, you've come out of uni and you, you want to get into the camera department and all that kind of thing, but you don't really know where to start. Would you recommend someone perhaps, like, saving up money to buy their own camera and things like that? Like, Because I know lots of cameramen have their own, you know, or camera women, sorry, um, have their own kit, but some don't and then some hire. Like, what's your kind of thoughts on that? It depends on where you want to end up. I feel like not everyone needs to be a owner operator. And if um, not everyone in the camera department wants to eventually be a DOP shooting their own stuff, there's a lot of people who have their like long careers being a second AC or first AC and really love doing that role. And if you're in those positions, you don't really need your own camera. The productions you work on will provide them or the DOP you're working for will provide them. Um, what can be more useful is um, say if it's your first AC and having your own focus kit can help with your career and help you practice even when you're not on set and that sort of stuff. Um, so it kind of depends where you want to end up, whether you necessarily need to go down the route of owning your own camera or not. Yeah. And I guess for those kind of in this call, you know, watching who were also filmmakers as well, like trying to make, you know, short films and things like that. Is there any equipment you would recommend that would be good, especially like on the low budget size of things? I know we spoke a lot about kind of, you know, doing favours and things and like lower end kind of costs. Like, is there anything you've used that you know is, you know, a good piece of kit to yeah. use? In terms of, um, I think you make it a bit more specific. Are you talking like a specific camera model to start out with or? 
Yeah, sure. So perhaps like, uh, yeah, particular kind of cameras that might be good, but also like if you're starting out as a gaffer and you want to get some little bits, is there any like really cool lighting kind of kits that do the job that are quite, you know, low budget? Yeah. So with cameras, I'd say first thing you should start out with is your phone. Because our phone cameras are like incredible nowadays and you can do so much with them and you can learn so much about composition, about lighting, ex about exposure just with your phone. So that's always the best place to start. Um, the next step up, I think, to look at like some mirrorless cameras. Panasonic do really like good low budget ones, which are good and can start getting you to work with different lenses. So like the G7 and G9, uh, like um, both under like 500 pounds secondhand, is probably as cheap as you're gonna find it when it comes to a uh, mirrorless camera. Um, and that's always a good place to start and then after using that for a bit, you'll probably start to understand cameras more and what you're looking for in your next purchases. And that's when you kind of go down whichever route you prefer, whether it's Blackmagic, Sony, Canon, Panasonic. Yeah. Um, in terms of lighting, I think to start out with keeping it low budget, I think it's good to try and learn how to shape light and take advantage of the sun because of you can do it a lot with the sun and with modifiers stuff like diffusion and bounce and um, negative feel and that sort of stuff and kind of you can l spend very little using just modifiers and the sun and kind of learn a lot about how light works and how you can manipulate it to get it to do what you want it to do and then after once you start to save up more money you can start buying specific lights and um getting some soft lights, getting some hard lights, maybe getting a tube and different lights, which have different purposes for different scenarios. But kind of with the sun, you can turn it into any of those types of lights. So it can be a good one to start, be an introduced introduction to lighting. Thank you, Bethas. That's really good advice. Thank you um, for going through all that. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. Uh, so one is from Harley. Uh, when you're DOP uh, on projects, how do you prefer to work with the director on a creative basis? Um, so what I find is, or what I try to do as DOP um, is I will kind of want to be in service of the director and I would kind of want to be malleable to the way that they like to work instead of always trying to force them to do it my way. Because of, um, at the end of the day, it's the director who's hiring you. So the more you can accommodate them, the more they're going to enjoy their experience working with you. And hopefully you get to work with them more and more and kind of develop that relationship and that language with them over time. Um, generally speaking, I'd say I it's really nice when your director's got a clear vision about what they want and what they like. And, um, and they're good at communicating that to you because of, you can kind of come in and enhance some of their ideas or work out how to actually achieve some of their ideas. But when they don't have the like, clearest of vision of what they want, you kind of have too many choices and too much freedom. It can kind of be hard to actually find the image that they're looking for and that everyone in your project's happy with. Whereas when they've got something clear that they can give you, you know what you're striving towards. Yeah. Oh, really, man. Um, last question. So if you could look at, 10 years ago and you look at your younger self is there anything you would say to that person trying to you know achieve in the industry perhaps any wise words or wisdom um i think one thing that a lot of people probably need to hear and i know i did when i was younger is it's really good to try and like let go of your ego when working in such a collaborative field like filmmaking there's so many different roles where like you're trying to achieve someone else's vision or direct as a director you should be like listening to people who are more experienced in that field and their ideas to enhance your own and a lot of times ego can be a thing that gets in the way with the creative process as everyone thinks that their way is the best way and everyone needs to listen to them and I think um learning to like be a better team player and just like listen to other people's ideas, kind of understand that everyone's trying to create the best thing possible and everyone's trying to go in that same direction and trying to help each other and coming in with that mindset that like, you want to do the best job for each other, 
not just yourself. Yeah. Very wise words, Matthias. Thank you so much, man, for your time and answering all those questions, man. It means a lot. Thank you. Um, no worries. So thank you, Matthias, for your time. Let's give him a round of applause because that was, that was great. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, great. So we're now going to move on to the next part of the q and I'm going to hand it over to Alison because um, I've been asking all the questions and I think it's now time for Alison to grill me. Um, so <laughs> I'll shush and stop asking big questions. Um, yeah, so thank you, Matthias. That's great. Alison, it's all, all yours. All right. Oh, anyway, um, thank you everyone for participating in the screening so far. I mean, excuse me, Q&A. <laughs> um, a lot of really nice insight from everyone. So, Josh, here are my questions that I want to ask you. Oh, um, first off, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do, if you want to get into it. Sure. So uh, I'm the director of Alice Entertainment, of the new production company uh, me and Alison have started. Uh, and I'm also an actor. I do I dabble in a bit of different things. So I'm, an act, I'm trained as an actor, but I also write, produce, edit and cast and direct um, for short films and um, all sorts of different video stuff, film related things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, the next question I have, which I think a lot of people at this Q&A would be very interested to hear, is tell us more about how you came about becoming a filmmaker. You said you have a background in acting, but what got you into actually making films um, and now running your own production company, really? You know, it was, a, it was a strange thing because when I was younger, I had no clue at all what I was going to do nothing I was a shy kid you know timid I, I had no clue I was just kind of get through school trying to pass everything you know about a billion GCSEs and then uh, my drama teacher was like come on Josh someone's dropped out the theatre show we need you in it I'm like nah I, I can't sing I can't dance oh uh, no and in the end mm -hmm. I gave it and that was the one thing that kind of set it all off ever since that night mm -hmm. I first performed I kind of just everything exploded um so that's kind of where it all started i knew from then i had a real love for acting for film for theater everything performance wise i you know i enjoy and then it was only when i went to northampton uni when i studied acting it was kind of like drama school but it was in the university setting so you didn't have that you had a bit more support basically through uni um that was where i learned more about film and i realized Actually, when I watched films since I was younger, you know, like Rocky, love Rocky. Um, but, you know, th those kind of films always watched. But it was only when I went to uni did I think, OK, how, how, did they, how did they make that? How did they do that shot? How did they do all this? And then once I left uni, I was like, OK, I just want to do it my way. And I saw loads of actors, actresses just sending self-tapes out constant. Mm. And some people not hearing anything back. Some people getting a job I'm just I'm thinking I want to do the opposite I don't think I could do that um so mm. I thought well, instead of applying for the work I'll create the work so I started writing stuff mm. and, and then one thing led to another and then yeah uh, a few films later luckily you know gratefully I'm so grateful it's kind of got to this point um yeah we'll see where it goes yeah absolutely um what you were saying kind of segues into the next question that I have. Um, I was curious more about the projects that you are have already worked on, anything that you want to say about that, and the network that you've developed through these projects. Anything you want to say, you have Recollections Part 1 that is going to be, that has been shown through the screening and will be shown through the virtual screening, of course, but you have other projects in the works and Tell us about your experiences in general with those projects that you got. Okay. Um, so, as I said, when I left uni, I just started writing, and that's where recollections come in. Um, originally, there was a feature film that I'd written, and uh, an investor come on board for it, and it was all kind of happening as if it was too good to be true. You know, when you have that gut feeling mm. when you do something, and everything's kind of blowing, and then uh, kind of didn't work out. And I thought, okay. So I 
started writing a short film that's like a prequel to that feature film. Um, that's where Recollections was coming from. So thank you to my mum who's watching. Um, my parents and that um, helped me out a lot financially with that. Um, so that was the first project I ever did, left Lehman Uni. I never directed or produced before. Um, I think it was about two weeks before the shoot. Uh, talking about, I think Harley was saying like, you know, there's a plan A, B and C and D. We went to plan E on this one. Like my producer just completely disappeared two weeks before. Um, and I had no idea how to produce anything. I was like, oh no. So I just went for it, just kind of messaged people I knew, started researching, just making it happen. But if that never happened, I wouldn't have known how to do that. So it's kind of good. Mm. Um, but yeah, so film recollections, that's in the screening. And ever since then, you know, I met Matthias on set. Matthias was the gaffer for recollections. Um, and I was like, I really like working with Matthias. I wanted another project. So we did a film called Movie Day. Um, which is on a trailers on our YouTube channel, by the way. Um, yeah, really, it should be coming out soon. It was fantastic. So that kind of led one thing to another. In terms of low budget stuff, that's kind of how it was handy because we filmed it in my house, but no one knew it was my house. You know, it, it looks creepy anyway, my house, because it's really old. <laughs> so it worked, you know, um, so it was kind of handy. But yeah, and then from that, little things have happened. So I've written a few scripts and then... Uh, next week, Saturday, I'm shooting a, a short comedy um, film, which some people in this call are part of. Um, and then, yeah, there's a yeah, it's exciting times. I think it's all about networking and uh, mm -hmm. just believing in yourself. Because I started off not really thinking at all what I was going to do, and everyone said I couldn't do it. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone was like, "Josh, really a feature film? You just left uni? Like, are you okay? Um, you know?" And yeah, I think I was too eager but you don't know until you try you know and i guess that's sometimes the the art of life isn't it um yeah absolutely yeah that's a good answer um right i think you make up a, make a lot of really good points there about how things really do just kind of fall into place once you start doing the thing um with that said once you start doing the thing you also learn a few lessons about each experience that like goes into my other question, like lessons that you've learned about filmmaking, anything you want to share with the Q&A about, I mean, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, like not jumping too far ahead, like, oh, that's what I have to do. I have to do plan E or, you know, but is there anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, lessons I've learned is definitely uh, definitely how to approach people you've never met. That's definitely mm. one thing. That's because when one. I first started, I started putting loads of Facebook like posts out to every group chat I could find. And uh, <laughs> there was a couple of people who were genuine and really tried to help. And there was about 90% of people that were just haters, you know, messaging, angry messages and stuff, you know, conversations with people, ins you know, insulting and you have to block them after a certain point. And it's like, you know, most people are, you kind of got to do your research before you, you do that. It's like people are nice, but you've got to um, present yourself in a, in a very good way. And when I first started, I was just hungry so I kind of had that tunnel vision and I wasn't really seeing everything clearly and uh what people were saying was was right you know I should consider this have I considered that you know whatever it was so that's definitely one thing I've learned um I'm trying to think uh I think in terms of the industry and everything one thing I've learned is sometimes your best friend is yourself because when the going gets tough and you think that, you know, you ain't got a lot of time on your hands, like, especially when I was in that recollections position that the whole two week period, you know, I had to make sure all these contracts were out. I had to make sure the location was sorted and all that stuff. Uh, and I already set the date for the film. It wasn't like I could just back out. People had already made travel plans and all that kind of stuff. The insurance was already paid, you know, so I kind of had to, I had to be kind to myself and be like, right, 
I've got these two weeks, I've got to plan it, I've just got to do my best and leave it at that. So it's kind of just being kind to yourself and trusting yourself and, yeah, just keeping that in mind no matter what. That's really good. That's a really good lesson. Um, yeah. Um, so things have been going pretty well for you so far. Um, you went from recollections to now movie day is coming up to other projects that we're excited to show you here at Adders. Um, but I want to segue, I want to talk about this new chapter that both of us really are engaging in, not just in making films and like just with the money that we have, but um, recently we formed officially Adders Entertainment as a company. Really excited about that. Um, but is there anything you want to add, Josh, about Adders as a production company, about running a production company, what you're learning so far, what you want to learn, what you're excited about in the future, and like the potential you think that Adders Entertainment has, basically. Okay. One thing I say is tougher than it looks, 100%. <laughs> it may seem easy because it only costs £12 to register your business on Company's House, but it's like a whole other ball game when, when you um, when you pay the £12. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about um, the industry, about how to deal with clients and things. And, um, you know, I think also I've learned you have to be unique. There's so many production companies out there that are trying to earn a living from making films, you've kind of got to find a way to separate yourself from the rest, whatever that is, whether that's your why you're doing it or the films you make or the people you work with, or is it all, you know, charity based projects you work on, whatever it is, you know, I think for those people who are interested in making a production company, that's what I'd mm -hmm. advise. Um, but yeah, kind of the new chapter is exciting, but also very nerve wracking. I think, um because we're thinking about doing a, a new streaming app so uh competing with the likes of netflix and all the big you know companies we kind of want to be among them and so um yeah that's kind of a, a tough one so if anybody's kind of also struggling for funding wise it's something i recommend because it's a learning curve I never heard of angel investors before. Um, I can put the link in the chat, but they're, um, it's basically like Dragon's Den, um, where people give you money in exchange for equity in your business, or it could be deemed as a loan. So if you've got a project going on, you know it's gonna make money back, or you've got a project and you're willing to give a bit of the you know, control over to somebody else who's got more experience than you, then, it might be worth looking on those websites, but that's what we're looking at anyway for ours. Um, mm -hmm. So it's exciting times, also very nerve wracking, but yeah, I'm just grateful. And uh, yeah, and for those who are in the call who have worked with me, you know, thank you very much because it wouldn't have been without you guys that we've made it to this point. Um, and hopefully it's to many more projects. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say before I go on to more questions, um, the people who are on this call who have reached out to us this week, um, thank you again for engaging in this Q&A, giving yourself a chance to learn more about us. We love meeting more and more filmmakers during this journey. It's an exciting journey and I appreciate you going out and getting it and um, knowing who we are. Um, yes, and I second what Donna just said to yeah. the, in the group chat <laughs> that Math Matthias is a great person to work with. Absolutely. Um, Free promotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, like, um, I mean, that's the game. The filmmaking game is no people. It's all about who you know. Um, and we're very fortunate to meet a lot of really awesome people so quickly and so in depth. Um, so I just have a couple more questions to just close things out. And of course, we're not limited to what I say. I mean, open the chat up, people. If you have questions for Josh, let it know. Um, thank you, Henry, by the way, for being here. Um, it was lovely having you. But um, Josh, 
uh, looking at yourself five, ten years ago or so, what do you want to tell him about your future, about what you want him to know? Uh, I would say not worry about life so much because I don't know about anyone else can relate to this I think uh, we all worry kind of where things are going to go what we're going to do if what happens with our lives once we finish school or even during school you know you do your GCSEs you do your A levels if you do that you go to university it's all to to do something but you never really know if you're going to make it or you never really know if you know it's all going to go down that straight path so I think I would definitely say to kind of just take it one step at a time because then I was very anxious and kind of just uh was too worried to enjoy the moment you know what I mean and I'd say that to everyone else like when you're on set if you get an opportunity to be an extra or even just talk to somebody who's you know in that film that you want to go in whether it is filmmaking or whatnot you know just take every moment as it comes because it will just go like that like it would just like kind of fly by um i remember this helps i remember a story of this kid who was at uh, my old secondary school right we had this whole um curriculum where you had the older students mentor the younger students and i had to mentor this this kid and bless him he was getting picked on he was getting bullied you know i won't mention his name but it was it was a tough time for him right he just joined the school and uh but he was always such an outgoing loud like outgoing loud like if you heard someone in the corridor speaking it was him like you know what i mean he, mm. you'd hear him from like, the other end of school bless him and he wanted to be an actor he was like so set on being a theater performer he was like yeah i want to do it i want to do it and i always remember in when he was in year 10 he got up on stage in front of all those people and some of those people were the ones who weren't you know so kind to him and uh he performed his heart out and he got a standing ovation at the end and i always remember that um because it was the same show that you know i was in and uh ever since then it changed for him but the, th the thing is he the point of that story is because he never stopped believing in himself and he didn't care he was just like i know i want to do this I'm going to enjoy this moment. He just stood on the stage and enjoyed his bow and took it all in and was like, if I don't get to do this again, okay, I can stand there and say, I did it this once and, you know, I did good. So that's what I would kind of recommend for everyone else, no matter where you are in your life. The small things, be grateful for and treat yourself to something. Yeah. Wow. That was a really good answer. Wow. Whew all right um so i wanted to quickly ask you then um something that was brought up in the group chat a question um yes donna never give up yes um a question in the group chat was josh what is your dream for adders entertainment i think it's a very good question my dream for adders entertainment is two things one I want us to produce like the big blockbuster films. I want us to like have films in the cinema, like just like Warner Brothers do, just like you know, all those big kind of companies. Um, I'm set on that. And uh I think also I don't want to just just do those films. I want to do films that inspire people, you know, because as I said, for example, with Rocky, watch that as a kid, that inspired me so much, just the mentality of you know the character. Um so I kind of want to create stories that people can relate to because I think that's what film making is like the tool of that is so powerful all the way. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second thing is about that app I was telling you about. I kind of want us to be the next big streaming platform, big time. I think it, I personally mm -hmm. think it needs to change because uh, you think Netflix, Amazon Prime, they're all kind of running the show at the minute. And I think I can speak on behalf of filmmakers here it's very hard to get your work seen and it's very hard mm -hmm. to pitch stuff, get the funding, you know, to showcase your work and then also get any financial gain out of it, you know, because you put your own money in it and then say it's a short film, you get maybe hundred pounds, 200 pounds back, say if you did a premiere, but, you know, that's, that's kind of where it leads to when you spend thousands on a, on a film. So I want to 
create a fund for filmmakers. I want to make sure that independent filmmakers have a place to put their films. Because don't get me wrong, blockbusters are great, but there's so many independent films that just missed that are also amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's my dream for Adders, um, personally. Uh, who knows? I hope you know all of you here today can join us on the journey because I think it's yeah it's going to be a good one and it's a tough road for all of us moving forward. So we've got to stick together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Those are all very good points. Um, you were talking a lot about Rocky, and I just wanted to mention um, with all this talk about inspiration and going for it right now. Fun fact. It took Stallone, Sylvester Stallone, only three and a half days to write that script. Like he just sat yeah. and decided yeah. to write the script. So if you ever feel like, oh my God, I don't know what I can do to make an inspirational film, it doesn't take that much. It doesn't take that long. Well, it takes much, but you know, just go for it, really. <laughs> Hear from Rocky himself. All right. Um, I am going to ask one final question. Anyone who has any more questions for Dash, now is your time to really put in the group chat. Otherwise, we can close shop afterwards. But Josh, is there anything else that you want people to know about the film industry, about making films, about meeting new people, anything? Uh... I think you've got to find a balance. So I recommend people like attend networking events and stuff. Like I attended one about a month ago. Uh, It was the British Film uh, Institution, I think it was called. It was like a networking event in London. Mm. And there was such a range of people there. Like it was, it was just uh, crazy. And some of them were investors. Mm-hmm. So as soon as I found that out, you know, that woke me up and I kind of went, oh, okay, who are you? And, you know, I tried to find out, you know, I tried a bit of a chat with them. So it, it is handy to kind of do it. And we all struggle with the funding situation. So, you know, what I would say last thing is, um, It's good submitting stuff to script competitions and it's good submitting to film funds, but it can just waste your money away. Sometimes you've got to just know, okay, how cheap can I make the film? Okay, how much, how many hours do I have to work extra at work to make that amount of money? Okay, let's do it. Because what happens is once you do that first film, that's when things take off. You have to take that leap at your own bank account and take it from there i wouldn't waste money on script competitions and all sorts because i blew away hundreds of pounds for um kickstarter promotional adverts that just went nowhere so i wouldn't you know do what you know what works mm-hmm. yeah absolutely no i 100 percent agree and to go off your point josh um with especially with the screenwriting competitions and everything what i've always found from just those kind of like blow your shot kind of situations is that the percentage of you actually meeting someone face to face and making connections that are really going to make people say oh you oh i like you are really slim they're really slim but going to say like networking events like you talked about, um, the BFI or um, even moments like this where we have a Zoom call with a bunch of filmmakers, that's how you get the connections, like the real connections. Because really, who do you want to work with? You want to work with someone who knows their stuff, for one, when it comes to filmmaking. But for two, you want to work with people that, that you like, that you know, that you are familiar with. Because I can tell you right now, there's a lot of people who are really skilled at being a DP, who are b- really skilled at acting or screenwriting. But who do you, as a filmmaker, connect with? You know what I mean? So I think you bring up a really good point about all of that. So something I want everyone to take away from this call is if you want to make it in this industry, first off, it kind of is about luck, 
about who you know and what opportunities come out at you. Two, taking advantage of those opportunities and reaching out and making some of those opportunities yourself, making that first film, for example. And the most important one is keep those networks, keep those people in your life. Anyway, um, Thank that's you. all I, yeah, absolutely. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to know, wants to add before we say thank you very much for coming? Enjoy you the rest of your Sunday. <laughs> no, cheers, guys. Thank you to you all uh, for coming. I just want to say thank you to uh, Harley, Holly and Matthias for your time as well. 